right now. A little, little flu going around. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, so I had to give a little rest. But y'all don't mind, right? Nope. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nope. All right. You want my DJ pads outside? Q&A. Oh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sir, you like your throne? No, no, no. I'm not on the throne. <laughs> I'm on the turlet, yeah, the turlet, yeah. So you, uh, you just, just get in uh, just now? Sorry. Well, you know, I've been, been running, I've been running. Just the altitude yet? Uh, I know how to do that. You know, I've been here a couple of times. I'm <laughs> exactly. not drinking, you know. I'm not drinking, I'm not going to smoke. Smart You're not going to catch me. You're not going to catch me out there like you did me last time. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, maybe what we'll do at the end, we'll we'll talk to you and see what he wants to do in terms of you know the order of the book signing and whether or not he wants to allow you to take pictures and stuff. That's totally up to him. You know, we're not gonna press the issue, but we'll just kind of see what his vibe is. And we're taking pictures. <laughs> okay, no. good. We didn't want to sue. You know, you guys got a lot of stuff going on, but if, if you know, we'll figure it out at the end. We can just work out the uh, nuts and bolts of it afterwards. So cool. So let's dive in. You ready to rock? Yeah, it was rock. All right, it's rock, baby. All right, well, first of all, thank you everybody for taking time out of your busy Friday night to come down here. Definitely, and like that. In the St. Patrick's Day, in St. Patrick's Day, right? That's right, that's right. That's right. Irish? <laughs> no. No. No, that, that's my mom. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll work out the logistics. And, yeah, first, first things first, um, I, my name is Cassidy, DJ Beds. I work for a radio station here in town called Flow 1071. Uh, I do some DJing on the side. I, I DJ for these guys, the Broncos, Denver Nuggets, and I got asked to come down here. And Why do I say these guys, the Broncos? <laughs> they're not happy with the Broncos, I see, because they, they, they always say these guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just, not like my team, the Broncos. I just don't want to, not these I don't guys, want to get the a Broncos. cease and desist from the team for, you know, <laughs> saying it the wrong way. So, and, and I'll be asking a few questions tonight, maybe, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, <laughs> we'll get onto the uh, book signing portion, I promise, but I know a lot of people want to you know, find out maybe a little bit about the book and get some questions asked, answered if you haven't uh, had the chance to read it just yet. But obviously, you will, and, and you're excited about that. So, uh, first thing, you, um, I guess my first question is why a book? In, in the day, or, day and age where you could go, you know, go see Sway, go see Vlad, go see Ed Lover, what made you want to put it like? Did all that already? This, really, this, this is going to be timeless, you know. This is like a. It's like my it's like my Michael Max bi biography or something. You know, it's like, you know, it's gonna be timeless, man. It's gonna be around more and longer than right. Uh, so it's something than, about than the than permanence than. of like, you know, you pen to paper that made you want to put yeah, it I'm into still, that medium. Believe it or not, I still write my rhymes pen to paper. I can't do that computer thing. I'm like, yeah, just feel just disconnected. I don't feel like an artist. You know, I gotta sit there and, and put my pen. I gotta race. I got you know. I'm one of those dudes, man. Exactly. That makes total sense. So. Personally, I, I read it. I didn't quite know what to expect going in. I didn't know if it was going to be like music centric or tour centric. And I found out pretty quickly that you go into just a, an exquisite amount of detail describing the circumstances of your upbringing. Yeah, just, this, is from, this is from the ages of five years old to 26. That's me right there. That's little Yui right there. <laughs> That's little Yui. That was a little gangster little motherfucker right there. He was, he was terrible, that guy right there. <laughs> But, you know, he grew up to be a good guy. <laughs> right. And I found myself thinking, like, oh, man, when's he going to get to the part where, you know, they're recording music and touring? But then I, I realized about, you know, halfway through that it's really important to understand the circumstance, circumstances from which you came in order to, like, really fully comprehend the full picture of who you are as a man and how you relate to music and how you relate to other people. And so the, the, the personal aspect to it was just... Very, very, very detailed and very, you know, personal, for lack of better words. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wore my heart on my sleeve with this, you know. It took me two and a half years to write it. It's my first book. Uh, my editor chopped up a lot of fat, though. He chopped up a lot of fat on there. It was really, it was like 400 pages. He shrunk it down to 297. Huh? Did you have any conflict there? Like he wanted? Of course, to... of course. I had All right, conflict. okay. But a lot of stuff was legal. You know, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't say certain things, I mean, so I had to like bend it a little bit, you know. It's, you know, the, you go through a legal read. I ain't know nothing about writing books, so this is my first little episode of just learning how to write books. So you got to go through a legal read where the, the, the lawyer goes over things. Right. So you can't say that no more. 
<laughs> well, word? No, you can't say that. So, you know. So, in the book, the, the stories and the characters and the details are just incredible. And so to try to like pick things out to talk about with you, it was kind of difficult. But for some reason, I found myself like initially being drawn to like <clears throat> Cappadonna and, and some of the um, people that were part of his circles and, and part of his his cipher, like his brother. Lounge. His brother. Gosh. <laughs> was that guy kind of unintentionally like the father of like mid '90s East Coast hip hop slang? Because it sure sounds like you took a lot. Of his verbiage, nah, nah. incorporating to your life, and all, all of a sudden it's ever, like. If you ever met Lounge, you will understand because he don't even talk like how we talk. You know, he's just, it's yeah, the boomer. You know about boomer, exactly. <laughs> he just, you don't even talk how we talk. So, so if you if you really sat down listening to him talk, you'd be like, huh? But he just, that's how he talks. He just talks real slangish. But it almost sounds like, it almost sounds like he was like an East Coast E40 to where he was responsible for a lot of stuff you guys picked up. Which you know wound up in the tracks, which wound up other people trying to you know emulate and draw from, and so like in a way, no, he just, the he, kind of impact he, he had was he bigger was, than you realize. He's ins inspirational. He's inspiring. He's not a rapper. He right. just talks. No, he just no. talks real slang. As you like Jesus, that's that's kind of hot, dude. You know. So you know, you gonna you gonna you gonna take that and say, okay, you know, I, I can make some happen. What you just said right there. And also, as far as uh, Cap was concerned. I thought it was interesting. If, if he doesn't catch like that bullshit drug charge, he's on 36 Chambers. He's maybe the 10th member in the group at that time. I mean, did it project to look like that was going to be the case? If he nah, Kappa, Kappa was a stubborn. He was stubborn. He didn't, he didn't even want to rock with dudes. I had to literally, you know, um, what happened was Kappa had some beef with some dudes in West Brighton. So he came and got me. When he came and got me, you know, we went out there with the bangers on, and we regulated the shit. Then after I, you mm -hmm. know, showed him that, that, you know, I'm still his brother and all that, he's mm -hmm. like, you know what? Come on, let's go to the studio. So we went to the studio out there with Rain, you know what I'm saying? So he was kind of like, not, he was kind of like distance himself from dudes, but that kind of like brung him, I kind of like brung him in that way, you know what I mean? And that was the uh, ice cream verse in the Winter Wars part? Yeah, that was Winter Wars, his first verse, then um, ice cream, then, um, then I think Cuba Link wasn't he? Was it? Yeah, I think no, nah, he was. Yeah, he was on Cuba Link, right? Yeah, yeah, he was Cuba Link too. You know, so he was. Um, you know, he was just getting his feet wet. You know what I mean, and I knew he could fit in those slots because he had that style. I was like, you know what? Because I couldn't, I wasn't ready yet. So he was like, you know what? I'm a team player. I said, like, come on, you got to come in and make it hot. You know what I'm saying so. Cool. Um, question I had for you, I didn't know exactly how to place this chronologically, but I just had to ask. I've been on this like personal crusade for Cool G Rap my whole life, and to hear you talk about the fact that you know Raekwon yeah. was highly influenced by him and, and sort of what you could maybe characterize as, as like the mafioso style and hip hop that, that Raekwon refined, yeah. kind of you know made my heart sing because I've always thought that G Rap doesn't get nearly enough run when it comes to you know influencing Ray in that way, which then led to you know. You know, you know Jay Z and guys like Nas having that type of imagery well, and language in their in their he stuff. He came, he came with that street rap first, but then Ray refined it and Nas refined it, and then Biggie and Jay and all came with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was, it was, he was, you no, know, um, you know, um, you know, I forgot Rose to the Riches and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the first one to do that. Then he had Ice Cube was before that too, though. Cube was before him. Then G Rap. And then it, lead, then it led to a refinement of, 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 the, of street rap. I was just happy you, you gave him you know, the mentions in the book that he got, because I think when people talk about guys in the context of late 80s hip hop, they default to Rock and they default to K, and, I, and obviously they should. But I was happy to see G Rap get that contextual kind of placement in your book as having in, influenced Ray in that way. So that was dope. Drive like I know, I know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Thank you. I'm not a professional like you. So anyway, that was a bit of like sort of a, a tangent, but back to you know you and and the time leading up to Thirty Six Chambers, you were not able to be as involved in the album as you wanted to be, yeah. because you know you were you know, dealing with your legal situations and in and out of jails. Yeah, I still was a street dude. I was right. I was twenty percent rap and the rest of me was street. You know, what I mean, I wasn't really focused like everybody else was, but I was trying to survive and just my head was wasn't in the right space. And as you said uh, in parts of the book, that kind of threw you off your game for. 
quite some time, for years. What do you mean, far as like what? I mean, like, you, how, how did you put it? Uh, getting your bounce back, like that time away from music. Oh, yeah, that, that incarceration does do it to you like that, you know? It just takes away, strips you for everything, strips you your freedom, your identity, you don't know who you are. It's just, you know, you have these mental issues that you don't even know you have until you come home. Right. You realize, like, wait a minute, I'm handicapped a little bit here. And that affected your ability to write. Yeah. You relate to music? Well, not, not really relate to music, just to get my little two step back. You know okay. Because I mean? it was some, um, so it was an adjustment period. I got, you know, then, then you know, I had, to, I, had to, I had to push through a lot of situations where, you know, I got kicked out of the booth. I told you, I got kicked out of the booth 15 times. <laughs> right. The old dirty's crazy ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was, was going to be one of my later questions. Was he the <clears throat> instigator in, in that kind of the dynamic? Like, he just didn't give a fuck. He just, yeah. Oh, man, so he just didn't care. <laughs> he just didn't care, man. He just was, he just how dirty he was. He ain't hold no punches. If your breath stink, bend your breath stink. Look at my face. <laughs> you, got, you, know, you, you got, you sense you guys were brothers like that. You, yeah. You, yeah. You know. Yeah, you, need, decor, you, you, need, you need people like that, honest, exactly. the honest people exactly. around you. Somebody you walk around with a book on your face, you still, you know, I ain't gonna tell you got a book on your face. He don't want to tell you something about, yo, dog, you got a book on your face. <laughs> Wipe that shit off, please. Exactly. Kill me. You do need press like So indulge me on something. This is kind of like Shriveless too, but I just, I'm just curious. Six guys on the cover of this. Let's see. That's not even nobody from the clan, you know that, right? I didn't know that. Only person, only person that's, that's really from the clan on there is Rizzo in the front. So hey, these are like stand-ins and uniforms? That's that's Riz's brother. Oh. That's Lask. That's 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 Mike. Let me see who else. Uh, who is it? Let me see. This is Riz uh matter of fact, that is dirty. That's dirty. That's Lask. And I don't know who else is in there, but it's it's not all of us. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. You made, you made it happen though. <laughs> you came together all right. You came together all right. So I guess if we fast forward a little bit to more mid '90s as we're getting into you know Wu Tang Forever era. Um, you, you briefly mentioned the RZA studio flood in your book, but you didn't go into detail too much. We know that you know Inspector Deck inf infamously lost a solo album because of that incident. How did that affect you? Did you have anything like stowed away? Any verses? Oh yeah, man. I was I had beats that was on my name on it, you know. But I like I said, I was <laughs> I was, was upset, you know, about the. I was upset about the whole thing, man. It was a, it was an era of music that you know it just, it's gone. You know what I mean, it might not, it ain't gonna come back. You know. So you and was there a point which you like tried to get with Rizzo and be like, hey, remember the way you flipped that sample and can you bring it back or was it just try all that. tough I, to try I, to recreate said, those I, moments I in time? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. That's like, I'm not a producer like that. Right. You know, I'm just a writer. You know, I write. So. Um. Was Cuban Links was originally slated to be the follow up to Thirty Six Chambers? Did, did I that's read that? Not, right? That's what I was told. I don't know. You got he got rid of that. And then because of like the selfless nature of you and the other guys in the crew, it was just sort of a, a team kind of mentality to where you're like, okay, well it's their time to shine and let's put out Cuban Links and make it a, a Rain Ghost thing and it's not going to be the, the, the your next Wu Tang. That's how you guys so just sort of gotta, did it. You got to ask Ray. You got to ask my, Ray's a Rizzo about that one. He said, he said this, he said that. I right. didn't know that was, I didn't even know that was the situation until he, somebody said that. I was like, word? Okay. You know, it is what it is, man. We're still turning out good, though. You know, still oh, it's turning incredible. Out good. It's just interesting to me when I caught that tidbit to think that that might have just been an actual Wu album at some point. I mean, yeah. thought I'd ask you about it. Um, back to like the process of making songs, you, you referenced, you know, Dirty Kicking You Out of the Booth and. So maybe take me to the time when you guys are recording with Tank Forever and you're actually, you know, together, you know, in, yeah, in the mansion time. doing your thing. How, how do you guys actually like, what's the process? Do you, do you all get a chance to hear the beats first, take them back, and then come with your verses, and then like... Well, well I usually get, we usually get about 30 tracks, and then out of 30 tracks, you know, you pick the ones that you like. And then somebody step on it. Then if somebody step on it, like, ooh, and bring it, bring it out, make it sound good. Then do the follow up behind it, you know. So different guys would hear different beats and say, "I think I could fit well on that song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right to that, and then come back." And then if you know, what was was the hierarchy such that if RZA didn't like the way you sounded, he could like sort of just you know. Well, if it wasn't right, it wasn't right. You know, if you ain't uh -huh. right. If you wasn't right on the track, you just wasn't right on the track. You got kicked off. You know, you can come back again though. Okay. You know, that's the whole thing. You just keep coming back to you get it right. And you guys had that self awareness and that like that brotherhood where you could tell a guy, Hey man, I'm you know, 
my shit's hotter than yours. Or, I mean, I don't know. Or was it tough? Or the, were the egos conflict? Or was it just no, a good? It's not, it's not about who's hotter than it is. It's, you know when you hear it. Okay. <laughs> you know, you hear it, you hear it. It's like, okay. Right, so it's like a visceral kind of a thing. Yeah, you just kind of know. You, yeah, you know. So when you hear it, you're like, okay, this is good. And if somebody has come behind me and, and it goes up a level, you know. You know? Okay. It's, just, it's no, you know, there's no, there's no mystery way of doing it. It's just like, you come with it, and you fit the track, or you don't fit the track. Okay. Makes sense. So, um, kind of a lighthearted question. I, probably everybody that reads the book wants to ask you about this. Had circumstances been different, you think you had a better chance to succeed romantically with uh, Kim Kardashian and Janet Jackson? That was a... <laughs> Janet, 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 Janet's my aunt. That's Auntie Janet, first of all. Let's get something straight. That's Auntie Dante. Kim was cool. She just got skeeved out of what Dex said. Dex said some sucker shit. Yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll read that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he said some sucker shit. He's a beast. You know, he was rooming together and he, he said some crazy shit over the phone and, and ain't no girl gonna come around for that. I hope not. She didn't even return my calls, nothing. I ain't no calls returning, nothing. Try to call it back. Your part beat, none of that. Yeah, zero tolerance. I was like, ooh, okay. This is how she was. You know? I won't give away too many details from too many of the really good stories, but I gotta ask. Old Dirty used saran wrap for a condo when he couldn't find a profile. <laughs> All right. Just that, was your, that, was, that, was, that was Japan right there. That was Japan. Oh, <laughs> he's notorious for that type of shit. <laughs> it's startling, but it's also kind of not a surprise at the same time. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're like, wow, that's fucking crick. Oh well, it was dirty. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> you had a, you had a story in the book about Aspen. You know, and so I figured I might let you share. Parts of that, since it's you know regional and right, going skiing, not yeah, I'm, not, that was, I'm not you know I'm not really it's not really my culture, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no disrespect to white people, nothing. <laughs> I got put on it when I, when I did get put on. I was in love. It's the first time I saw it, I was like, Jesus, this is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. I had my ski suit on. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm skiing on top of the thing up there. I'm having fun. I'm like, yo, we're on top of a mountain. I did a mistake, though. I drank and I smoked. Yeah. At altitude. I, no, like, way altitude. Way altitude. Yeah. Altitude. <laughs> Little bit of liquor tore me down. I was bobblehead like this. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I spiked my shit? He was like, nah, but it's altitude. Smoked a little bit, that just even did me worse. Why even do that to us? <laughs> and you, uh, you still have phobia ski lifts? You don't trust them? Yeah, I didn't like that shit. Don't trust them? Nah. <laughs> it, was like a little, it was like, a first of all, it was like a little plank about this big. And you're going up this super big gorge. Come on. I was shitting bricks, man. I was like, yo, I'm holding over there. Like, and, it was, and it was, I was the only one on it. And it was leaning to the side, too, like that. <laughs> yo, what's up, dog? I was, like, ready to, I was getting ready to jump off. Yeah, because another thing, too, it kept stopping. <laughs> it wasn't a constant build going. No, it was click, click, click. Click, 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 click. <laughs> click, 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 click. Click, 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 Then the stadium, the wind be blowing. <laughs> and you look at in the back, there's nothing but mountains and shit. Like, yo, man, what the fuck is going on? Welcome to Colorado, right there. I've never been in no shit like that in my life. <laughs> never. That was a, That's how I feel. But when I got to the top of, top of the mountain, oh, man. I want to go back, you know, I want to have some okay. more fun. But it's you hard. Got down. But it's hard to get people's, you know, my people to even do shit like that. They, they don't even, you know, we concrete, concrete and steel all day. You don't even want to leave that. They don't want to leave that shit alone. Man. Like, oh, come man. on, let's go, let's go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so the, uh, the next kind of like group of questions, they, they all kind of relate. And to me, it made sense to ask it, um, starting in the present and then work backwards chronologically. So of course, last week, you, maybe you guys saw the news, the, the Martin Shkreli guy, the fucking yeah. <laughs> pharma dude, whatever. So he got can't seven get, years in prison. Can't get rid of this guy. Man. Yeah, right. You can clap if you want for that. Um, so, so yeah, he, he, How you feel about that dude, man? Yeah, man. Um, How does everybody feel about that? Yeah. He boosted that, 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 that medicine up to high, right? Yeah. yeah. He would have been. He'd have been killing it if he just kept it low, right? Yeah. He he was still in, you know. He liked to rub in people's face, so. Seven years sentence, you know, for de defrauding his, hey, his clients or whatever. He got one of those faces that you just want to punch in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right? Am I right or wrong, right? You see, you know, you ever seen people like that? Certain people, they just want to punch this dude in the face. 
He got one of those faces. He always does. He does. So I guess the update as far as like where the, the you know once upon a time in Shaolin, I was like, it, it's now federal property, right? They have to like sort it out. Jeff and figure all Jeff this. and Mueller got my shit. <laughs> so it's gonna be some time before Attorney they Attorney General. Oh God. And Mueller, the, te- the top FBI. I, you know, they want to see us. That's what it is. I'm going to go, I'm put my suit on and go get my shit back. It's, it's, it's too much. Mueller and Jeff, like, they, I, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> how, did y'all, how did y'all get that, man? Right. So that's not going to be resolved. I wish Leonardo for a while. DiCaprio would have would would bought it, though. Because Leo, yeah. Leo, Leo was about to, he was going to purchase it first. Yeah, he was this that close been, and that he got been, out bit. Yeah, that would have been way more classic and more prestigious. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, it seems like he probably appreciates it more, too. I mean, aside from the running you guys might have kind of had. Yeah, he was young. I was young. He was young. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's kind of sort of, he appreciates it. You know, he sees the value in it. Um, so I guess, again, to move backwards on it, that particular album, though, you, you talked about it a little bit in terms of... Uh, the recording process, and it might not necessarily have, I don't know, the, the, the emotional attachment to you that you would want to have with an album because it, it sounds like it was almost recorded under false pretenses to a certain degree. Yeah, it was, it, it got us piece by piece and little piece of piece by piece and they piecemealed it together. And then, you know, he told it was one thing that, you know, it wound up being some shit over there. Right, they, they said it was going to be a compilation or something. Yeah. Misrepresented? Yeah. yeah. Then next thing you know, this dude got it. I'm like, huh? Where the hell is this dude? Out of nowhere. I'm like, who is this guy? You know, then he got a whole bunch of bad press around him. I'm like, oh, man. Don't even. He got Little Wayne's record, too. Yeah. Little, Little Wayne. Yeah. So, I mean, and then this, I guess, you know, it's not the exact same thing, but kind of relates. <laughs> you know, you're, you're at a point now, too, where, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're exploring the possibilities of a, a pending Ross, a lawsuit with RZA, um, because I guess I'm trying to characterize it as best I can here. You're, you're trying to get some transparency as to what it is you're entitled to. And it's business, baby. It's business. Right, no, and, and you've never come across as bitter or vindictive or, or childish. It's always just about the business, but you're just trying to like basically get to a point now in, in, in this time that's passed since, you know, all the music was recorded and all these things went down where you're just trying to get some clarity about how the numbers shake out, you know, what, what it is you can do, what you can't do, because it's, it hasn't always been that clear. You know, you sort of moved as a team and did stuff as a team, but mm-hmm. it, it's maybe coming to a point where you just need to understand it better now. Of course. Right. Of course, this is what it is, man. You know, and I, I'm, I don't, I'm not bitter. You know, no. I just, like I said, I just want to see what's going on. I mean, he knows. He knows it's his, his punk ass brother that be like, uh, <laughs> right? You know, always trying to, yo, yo, somebody doing this? Now, listen, listen. Okay, so, it is what it is. Right. I don't care what nobody think, man. But you you oh, true. no, yeah. And, and yeah. to your credit, and this kind of like leads to my last few things I wanted to talk about. Everything about the way you carry yourself is, is so selfless and, and like has a maturity to it, and it's not vindictive. And I guess that kind of leads to my last couple of things I just kind of wanted to to bring up. Well, I get a little vindictive every now and again. I mean, yes, but. You know, but I, in, in certain situations, it calls for that. You know, in certain situations, it doesn't call for that. You know, and I try to handle my situations like that. You know, I'll say to myself, does it call for the raunchy? Does it call for the ratchet? No, nah, it doesn't call for the ratchet today. It calls for the, the, the you know, the, the, the proper guy, you know, the, you know what I mean? Yeah, of then, course. Then if somebody says something out of their pocket, that's when you get awesome, you know. Right, but it seems you like like you have a predisposition towards helping people. Oh yeah, looking out for people. I had a problem with that. That's what got me locked up. Right. <laughs> how, how do you think you developed that sort of like um, I don't know internal ethical clock? You know, was it innate, born with it? You know, That's your mother. My, my mother's side. I get. I piss. She pisses me off with that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, oh, ma, you be you got the little maybe a softy, wafty on the side. Where that softness come from? And that comes from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think also to some degree maybe like the, the teaching of the mathematics and the five percent like perspective totally relates to that anyway, or that's that's different? Something different. Something totally different. To you? Something totally different. That's just knowledge of self. Okay. That's just knowing who I am, how I came, how we came about as you know blacks in the community in, in America. You know, it breaks down the history and the demographics of how we got here, what happened to us, and yada yada yada. You know what I mean? All right. Last last thing for me. 
is the, is the candy you got fr from the dread outside the weed spot? Is it is it like have magical powers? The candy. The candy. Or is it more just like that weird moment in time where it's like a symbolic thing that happens? Essence. You guys will read about it. <laughs> essence. All right, moments. so there's, there's, you're not superstitious there's more, there's about more it. There's more than one. That's what. I, <laughs> first time I was like, could be. Second time I was like, what the fuck? Third time I was like, hold up. This can't be right. <laughs> this can't be going on. So maybe a little something uh, extra to that to that candy you got. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. It's hard to say. <laughs> Quantum physics is a mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, that's all I had. I don't want to you know, keep you from getting your book signed and getting a chance to meet you guys. So let's give a nice round of applause, a warm Denver reception for my man right here. You have the book, you're going to get it signed. It's absolutely incredible. Um, just a couple of little, other, other things. You have a show tonight. Yeah, what's that, brother? Lost Lake. Lost Lake Lounge, which is actually really close to where we're at right now. Yeah. It's just kind of yeah, down the street. We'll slide through there, do a couple of, you know. Promote. I got a new white record coming too at the end of the month. Venom. Yep. Venom comes out on the 30th, yes? Yeah, on the 30th. I've been there doing this. I've been writing for two and a half years on this and a year and a half on my record. It's like I'm, I'm like, I don't even want to see words right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't see nothing with words. I'm like, over words. I'm in the wrong place. Well, on behalf of everybody here, thank you for the time. I mean, living legend, bucket list for everybody in this room, and we appreciate you. And just this, thank you. This is thank a bucket you. list for me too. Hey, man. It's all love. Thank you so much again. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys, one more time. Um, I'm going to I, I don't see any reason why. It's up to, it's up to you our special guests. Yeah, you can ask me questions. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I was just curious, um, like, how did ODB's death affect the group? Did it change the music? Did it change lifestyle of any members? It changed everything, you know? It's like losing the arm. You know, you got you to gotta learn to live without the arm, but it's still at the same time. It's not the same without having the arm, you know. It's a death. You know? Yeah, it's kind of fucked up, man. Right? Yeah. What's time you talking about? First of all, because you talking about the Koch era in New York City was crazy. Yeah. Uh, Music-wise, it was different. You know, we were, um, we had a, you know, we was on a major, major label, yeah. and majors uh, have stockholders and stuff like that. So yeah. once they saw us putting in that work, because we, we can, you can be a group with a whole bunch of dope songs, but if you ain't got work ethic, they're not gonna push the, they're, they're not gonna put money behind you like that. Working, you got to work the same way as you can do a job. You know what I mean, you got to come through, do promotion, shake hands, kiss babies, and all that. You know what I mean? And then once you show them that you are of value like that, then they'll put millions of dollars behind you. So, you know what? We put some money behind these guys. These guys is out there rocking right now for real. And that's what happened. You know, they was they saw us out there. We was out there hard too. We'd be, we'd be on the road for like a year doing pump promo in the back of a van, smelling like. You know, smell like nasty onion arms. <laughs> Eight of us in there, the, the van smell like sweat, weed, and all type of nastiness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we loved that little, we loved the van. Though. That was our van. That was our home on wheels, you know? So we kept moving, and that's how it was. Question. Yeah. What is your favorite thing to cook drunk? <laughs> Hold up, you take some funny shit. <laughs> First of all, I got drunk cooking, and I was cooking fried chicken naked. <laughs> Don't ever do that. No. Don't do it. <laughs> I'll tell you that shit. Don't do that shit. No. Fried chicken naked. Drunk as a motherfucker. Least favorite thing to cook. Drunk. Yeah. One, what are your top five, like, like you have to have records, like, the things you still have to do. And when you listen to it on your walk, ah, that's, that's that's the hard one. Everybody always asks me about my music preference. It's too much, man. Too many, too many, too many great artists for me to say five. You know, I listen to everything. Glad, this, A, C, D, C. I listen to everything, man. It's too much. You know what I mean? One time I might feel disco-y. I might go down a summary. 
One time yeah. I might be Anita Bakery, you know what I mean? <laughs> Another time I might be, you know, I might be hauling oats to tomorrow, you know what I mean? Or I might be over here, you know, then I might go a little Elton John, I might go a little Dolly Parton, I might do a little, you know, too many. I might have a little cash, Johnny Cash in there, you know? I'm a songwriter, so I like real shit. I like real music, man, you know? So I want to hear some lyrics, I want to hear some stories, you know what I mean? I want to feel a certain way. I may, be, I may even hit Odyssey, you know Odyssey. Who knows Odyssey? Okay, yeah, Odyssey too. A little bit of Odyssey, you know. People look like, who the fuck is Odyssey? Yeah, <laughs> look up, look up those those um you know classic dudes. I I listen to you know I listen to classic music. All the stuff nowadays is blah. Yeah, you know, they don't even it's too it's too um, mechanical. Hey you, yes. What was the studio session like for uh, Miss Dear Chess Boxing? Oh, mine was it was a mine was a crazy situation because I just came out of the jail and Richard just grabbed me up. No, 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 no. I had, to, I had to go to the house, rush to the house. He rushed me to the crib. As soon as I got out of the can, he just rushed me to the crib and I just laid down my verse. And I didn't really, I didn't really like my verse because I didn't, like I said, I didn't really, I didn't like my voice because I didn't know how to control my voice at the time. You got the dopey voice from the crime. Oh, now I do. <laughs> but, but back then, I couldn't stand my voice because I didn't know how to control it. Yeah, yeah. Now I can control my stuff. I, can, I know I can, I can, I can keep them I can keep a same pitch and make it back. You know, I can make it shimmy more than, than before. Before it was a raw. You know, it was like that. You know what I mean? So now I'm also raw. I'm gonna give it to you. You know, I'm more, more of an, I more of an instrument. I've seen you alive a few times. Yeah. We you broke down the fence on Rock the in LA. That was you. I was there. Both <laughs> times. Both times. That's, that's an old fashioned bum rush. Yeah. yeah. You have an honesty dirty, though. That's the only thing. Yeah, man, I know, man, I know. That you. Was that you on the seventh chamber? Was I said, is he, is he, is he dead? Nah, he tried to imitate my voice, though, meth. <laughs> <laughs> I was locked up for that. Uh, but I'll tell you something right now, I invented torture, though. Yeah, I heard that. I'm the one that invented torture. That's because I had nothing else to do on the block. You know, we sit on the block all day. We should think of crazy shit to do each, to each other. <laughs> we just sitting there, we got time to spend, so we just start making up shit. I'll chop your toes off. <laughs> chop your toes off and stuff them in your mouth. <laughs> you know, just think of the craziest shit you could do. I'll scalp you. Pour peroxide on your scalp, you know? <laughs> just think of the craziest shit you could do to somebody, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you know. It was a, it's a game we played, man. We passed the time by. Peace, you. I got a question. Yes, ma'am. What is your favorite memory of working at the Statue of Liberty with Mep? <laughs> <laughs> Mep is a crazy motherfucker, first of all. We was just we was just being behind it, behind the dumpsters, just talking mad shit. When I was talking, I can't even remember what we used to talk about, man. But we used to be in our own little zone, and um, you know, Mep's like my cousin and shit. So you know. We have like a weird relationship. He just gets on my fucking nerves, like on his nerves. So, you know, I probably don't like his big brother, little brother type thing, you know. So, I can't explain it. You have to just be around us. We like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. We those two. We just, we just like those two motherfuckers. Serious. We just like them two. I got a question. Yeah. Uh, what made you briefly leave Wu Tang um, and create Hillside Scramblers? With, uh, well, I didn't briefly do nothing. I was just trying to. Develop artists. I'm a, I'm a musician. You know what I'm saying? So I went back to the hood, got some crazy hood motherfuckers, man. Oh my gosh. I wish I never would have did that shit because it was just too much. Cause, King so, Justice? Nah, King Justice is all right, but dudes can't shake, certain dudes just can't shake that block shit. Man. They can't shake the streets. And I told dudes, like, yo, man, y'all gotta leave this stuff alone, man, because I'm here. I mean, I'm not affiliated with that crap. But y'all making me feel like I am affiliated with your crap. You know what I'm saying? So I had to like literally, you know, then I then I one of his mans got out of place. I had to tap his jaw. You know what I mean? So I said, you know what? I'm too old for all this, man. You know what I mean? I'm still out here. And next thing you know, I'm like, yo, next thing you know, I'm, I'm I'm catching flashbacks. I'm coming out of retirement again. You know what I'm saying? On some street shit. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm just gonna leave you alone. But you know, hillside joint do what we gotta do. You know what I mean? It's just the chamber. You know, I ain't leaving the woo. I just tried to develop some new hours. So there was some dope dudes on there, man. Some nice dudes on there. Yeah. You know? All right, looks like we maybe have one more in the back. I met you at the Lord's Supremacy with King Justin. And it was kind of 
a standoff issue with him and them and some of the other people. What was the dichotomy when you lived in Park Hill and uh, different gangs right there that were in uh, Staten Island? How was the makeup? How, how were you guys able to move around? And what were some of your worries as you grew up? Well, King Just, what happened with King Just, Just was down with some notorious dudes. One of my people I grew up, yeah, he was down with Black Fist. And that was, that was my people's. It was deep into the, you know, into the legal shit. And they had a chance to sell him. They, want, they were supposed to sell him off to Jermaine Dupree, but they didn't do it. You know, they kept him. They wanted to be greedy, whatever, whatever, whatever. So they ruined his career. So he got kind of upset, you know, because we was all, you know, me, it used to be me, King Just, Deck, uh, 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 Kappa, Meth, and Ray, Star Child, and um, RZ and Choice, we used to all be, you know, doing our rhymes in the hallways. And, um, you know, they always felt like we was conglomerate. And at the end of the day, it was kind of like a little battle between up, uphill and down the hill, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man. King Justice is a weird situation, man. He just, you know, he just spaced out on me. So, I, but like I said, Adrian can, he can catch one of them too, you know what I mean? Anyway, did I answer your question? Yeah. All right. Anybody else who does? Talk to me, fella. Talk to me. Don't be afraid of me. I ain't gonna bite you. Your favorite place to eat ever? Mm. <laughs> That's another hard one. There's too many, man. New York is full of full of food cuisines, man. You know, it's I like Thai food one day. Then another day I like you know I like a good Italian meal. You know, sometimes I like Greek. You know, sometimes. I just had Viet Vietnamese today. Where'd you go? Um, I forgot the name of the spot. Ah, <laughs> 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 yeah, my man. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'm not. I'm not smoking today. I'm not smoking in Colorado, man. You're not gonna catch me. It's high altitude shit. Man. I'm not even feeling good right now. So you're trying to smoke me next to my head, gonna be throbbing. I'm like, yo, why I do it to myself? My veins gotta get, you know, used to this altitude first. You know, I gotta open up my veins a little bit. I mean, taking this, you know, this air, this oxygen, this is good oxygen up here. You doing good on time? You as many questions as they want to ask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's do it. So I seen you as much time. I saw you like way back in the day with ODB. It was fucking awesome. Um, I saw you at Coachella with ODB Sun. I've seen a couple other times you guys bring like other people into the group. Do you Irish? What? You're talking with Irish accent. You got an accent? No, I'm not from Ireland. You do have an Ireland accent. <laughs> Talk to me, baby. I love it. No, so my thought is, like, there's a lot of talk about all the people that tried to jump onto the Wu name and, like, what was actually Wu-Tang. And it's really, like, debated nine or ten people. Other than that, like, what other chambers would you even consider part of your group? As part of your I always hated that shit. Because I'll tell you, sir, but he, I'll let you know later down there, why are you dealing with this fucking corny ass shit on the outskirts like this? Then he get mad at me, you know, da, 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 da. But I was like, yo, man, I was telling him, yo, you gotta focus on the eight, nine brothers, and that's that, bro. Everybody else is the end to this, man. You know, but he didn't wanna listen to me. That's how, you know, people, people, people gotta learn on their own. So, I, le I left it alone. I heard you were very You really an asshole like that? No, 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 no. It's my brother, he crazy. Everybody has their own little quirky porks. I'm an asshole too sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we have our little quirks and perks. But at the end of the day, it's still my, it's still my brother, though. You know what I mean? You get on my nerves, though. You know, it's like a you know, my hip Wu Tang is like a crazy hip hop family. I know. I've been following y'all. Yeah, you know, you got my, I got a drunk cousin. You know, he always drunk. Got a dude that always knows it all. Thing he know every fucking thing. You know. No, 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 not Meth. Meth, Meth is like a quiet. You know, quiet, cool out. He's married. You know, he has babies, so he just no, he's just a family man. Yeah, before he was crazy. Yeah, we all, it was all. You know, when you're young, you know, you, you you do all the good things when you're young. You get it out your system, and as you get older, you just mellow out. You know, you don't do the womanizing no more. You just got one woman. You just chilling with his babies and his family, and he's enjoying life. You know what I mean? What's your favorite city? The Rock. My favorite city to rock? Colorado, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious, man. Y'all motherfuckers turn up out here. Y'all serious. Y'all always pack the house. Y'all always got it rocking. Always got the weed popping. 
You know, Colorado has never let us down. You know, since day one, since we broke into this market, you always been, you know, Colorado definitely the top, one of the top. Yeah. Who's <laughs> on the top? All right, some hands in the back. Yeah, so what was that moment that you realized you were like, you know what, I've made it. This is, this is what I'm going to do. This is just, this is my. It's going to make you weak and you don't fall off. You know what I'm saying? So there was no, like, oh, you're only as good as your, your last project. You know what I mean? So it's a job. Now, after years and years of doing it, when, they, when I calculate it all together, then, that, then you put it together like, yeah, he did his damn thing. You know what I'm saying? But constant. Constantly going, you gotta constantly go. And what's their phones right now? Yeah. You know, Trump might say some shit that piss me <laughs> off. You know, you know, he might say some things, you know. I kinda incorporate everything that I did in my life or what's going on in my life in my music. You know what I mean? So I can't write about things I never did, you know what I mean? Or I can't so I have to stay in that bubble. But by me, you know, doing more research and doing more things and find out things.